might identify with certain behaviors, uh, and it takes a bit of training to loosen from this identification from the behaviors, but then the deeper you go, you start to be aware that the thoughts that you thought you were thinking, that you thought were so real, are not. And as you pull your mind away from them, they just fade and fade. They become more peripheral in your awareness and more peripheral. And then they do disappear. And what you're left with is just a state of stillness. Um, for many years now, I've just Jesus and this voice and the Spirit was guiding me. And then you kind of reach a state where it's like, there's like a merging that occurs where even the back and forth between what seems to be a you and the spirit, that even disappears. So there's not, uh, the questions disappear. Where there was before lots of doubts and questions, those start to dissolve and evaporate. And so your mind just reaches a state of rest and stillness where you still are perceiving a world, I mean I still perceive a world uh, it's just that I call it a, a happy dream uh, now because it's a dream of non-judgment. I'm just not judging the world. There's no sense of trying to break it apart or analyze it or figure it out. It's more just a state of witnessing or, or watching this occurring. You feel so joined and connected with everything and everyone. There's no sense of, um, you don't have like an agenda or you're not trying to push anything on anybody. Um, I can have anything from uh, salespeople call me on the phone and uh, just let it flow as guided by the Spirit. Sometimes I'll have a nice chat with them. Uh, Jehovah Witnesses show up at the door. Uh, it's a beautiful holy encounter. Uh, I've got nothing to convince anybody of. I still go where I'm invited and I go around the world, but there's no sense of trying to change the world anymore. It's just beholding it in a new light. It's very relaxing uh, when you don't have an agenda. Uh, you can just show up and it flows as it flows. Uh, I was just with a group of people, about 30 people in Noosa. We were having an open discussion one day, and finally one man on the side, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, can I, David, can I interrupt you for a moment? I said, oh, please do. <laughs> and then he brought up his questions and his issues, and it was very helpful for everybody. Um, and uh, so when I've had people come to me and say, oh, I could do this or that, or just what you're getting, I said, oh, I don't even believe in that. I don't even believe in interruptions. Uh, how could you disturb, disturb the gathering? But it's more of a state of just watching. It's watching and witnessing than it is trying to control or direct anything in a particular way. So that's, to me, part of what the relaxation is. It's very... Uh, relaxed, and at our peace house, we were saying it's sometimes not always peaceful. Although my general experience with everything is peace, so even it doesn't matter what's going on or what seem to be the actions or the reactions. It's, it's very much a state of peace. Uh, our kitty cats do what pretty much what the little doggies here have been doing, just are stretched out very often, and very much like in your house, Willow, where they're just stretched out and just have this meditative, uh, peaceful look on their face. Uh, and to me, that's very natural. You know, that's the way life is meant to be. We're not, we're not meant to struggle and fight and, and have a lot of uh, strife in our life. It's meant to be a peaceful, flowing experience and it feels extremely uh, natural. And in fact, on this, I mean, I've been speaking in traveling and speaking for so many years, but actually it just got to a point where I felt like I was coming to Australia this year to do more singing, so I've actually been singing to hear Helen, of course, she's been getting many requests to, to record a CD, but they actually were asking me to record a CD, which I thought was delightful. I told them, I went to a Course in Miracles conference uh, in San Francisco, and there was 417 people, and I was having lunch with a group, and I said, I think I'm going to Australia, and I'm going to start singing. I said, and I've got Helena with me too. She can really sing. <laughs> so, so it's been very, very delightful. And it's the same experience for me whether the body of David seems to be alone or with another person or with a group of people or even if I'm speaking to a large conference, it still has that cozy, warm feeling even if I'm in with, with uh, hundreds of people. It's the same
same experience because it doesn't deviate, it doesn't change. And so the ideas of, of missing someone or, or of being overwhelmed with a large crowd or, or so on and so forth, or, or in some days when I would have a Course in Miracles group and nobody would show up, I had a good time <laughs> there. <laughs> and to me it was, it was never about the, the appearances and uh, that's part of when people say, how can you be consistently happy in this world? It's very simple. It's, you just don't give any credence to the appearances and just stay living in your heart and that, that's what does it. That's the experience of the flow. So I think we are ready to have, um, if anybody wants to have food or share, uh, we'll just share a meal together and then um, maybe after about a half an hour or so we'll come back and share some more. And you can ask any questions you want to ask, bring up any topics or issues, share any emotions, request songs if we know them, we'll sing them. I see. We have a guitar that has appeared here now, and we, we've got a beautiful day here in Maui to just share, share the joy with each other and share each other's presence.